Mamacita. Friends get friendly, sweethearts smile. They all know in a little while that such lovely things begin with Bonazita. I would meet you where lovers meet, a small piazza or a shady street, just to hear the way you say Bonazita. If you said it in a thousand ways, I'd be waiting for a thousand days for that little Italian phrase, Bonazita. The fields as you're passing by, mountain towns reaching for the sky. Everybody stops to say, Wanna say it? You can hear it as you're driving home, south of Napoli or north of Rome. It's good evening, welcome back, Wanna say it? The day is ending, the night is near, and I'm intending to get there, dear, for that special way you say. When you say it, my world turns gay It's not good morning, it's not good day It's not I love you, but it sounds that way Wanna say it I would meet you where lovers meet A small piazza or a shady street Just to hear the way you say it Wanna say it There are two words that I've heard before Lovely words that I still adore But they mean just a little more From you, if you said it in a thousand ways, I'd be waiting for a thousand days for that little Italian phrase. Wanna say it? Wanna say it? Wanna say it? What is happening? What is all this? Oh, this is too much. I've only been away five weeks. What a beautiful one. What... Rosa! Rosa! Ah, Mrs. Campbell, welcome home. Did I receive mail? The aunt, she's well again? Did I receive letters? Yes. Oh. Bills, a catalog. From America. A postcard from Gia. From America. Yes, a three. Dear Carla, it's all set. I can't wait to see you and our darling Gia. I can hardly believe I've got an 18-year-old daughter I've never even seen. Dearest, the excitement is almost unbearable. I'm finally to see you and my lovely daughter Gia. What a beautiful name, Gia. Carla, baby, isn't it great after all these years I'm gonna meet that daughter of ours for the first time? Imagine me, Phil Newman, with an Italian daughter. What's the matter? What's wrong? It's over. The end of everything. What? What is it? All these years, no one knew. Not one person even suspected. Not even you. Now it's all through. Now you know everything! <laughs> What's this all about, General? You see, the men of this squadron fell in love with a little town called San Perino when they were there during the war. So instead of blowing lots of money on reunions every year, they put it all into a fund. And this year, they've come back with their wives and kids to give the town a new chapel. You might say these fellas wanted to make sure they'd never be forgotten. They left me pregnant. What could I do? But... Uh, 
Three fathers? Yes, three fathers. How could such a thing happen? You weren't here during the war. You don't know how it was that last summer. My papa had just died. I was all alone, 16 years old. Every day, more and more soldiers came to the American air base. Soon there was no more room, so they had to put them in the houses of people. In every house, two or three men. But my house was very small, just room for one man. So they sent the one man. A young sergeant, Walter, Walter Braddock. So sweet, so shy. A little boy. Beauty! Beauty, baby! <laughs> 20 years, how are you, Pete? Hi, sir. Very big ones, huh? You put on a little weight, I see. Yeah, don't tell me. It's a money belt. <laughs> Still the life of the party. Did you bring the wife? Oh, I begged her and I begged her. But she came anyway. <laughs> hey, Fritzy. <laughs> Say hello to Pete. Hello, Mrs. Braddock. Hi. Sarge hasn't changed much, has he? Still a million laughs? Oh, yeah. He's a regular Mardi Gras all year round. <laughs> Beautiful. Isn't he? Beautiful. Shy, sweet Walter. For a week, we were alone in a little house. Two children, lonely and frightened. We clung to each other. We, we comforted each other. But then he was sent away to fight. And the poor little sparrow was left all alone. Until the next day when Phil moved in. Oh, Phil. Phil Newman. Happy Capri Phil. With a head of wavy hair that fell over his eyes every time he laughed. Five years you've been eating chocolate bars. How come you always miss your mouth? Phil, uh, Phil, there's a little more in the corner. Baby, make like this. Let me see, Brucey. Okay. You got chocolate on your handkerchief. What do you want me to do? Put it back on the kid's mouth? But you're going to get your jacket dirty. Will you stop worrying about it? Well, honey, why don't you go to the customs? I'll call the hotel and make sure they put in an extra bed for Brucey. You better take Buddy with you. He has to go. Why didn't he go on a plane? He went on the plane over the Azores. Why can't he go by himself? Phil, please, don't reject him. He'll twitch. All right, come on, let's go. Me too, Daddy. And me. Why not? Everybody. We'll go family plan. Follow me, the Pied Piper of the men's room. We were just children, alone and terrified. But then he too flew away, and I thought my heart would break. It would have if they had moved in Justin. Justin? Yes, Justin. He was a pilot, wild, reckless, a gypsy out of the night. <laughs> Don't look now, but I've just had my bottom pinched. Welcome to sunny Italy. Do I acknowledge it in some way? Just turn the other cheek. Thanks for remembering it's still there. Oh, we're not going to play that record again, are we? Look, I'm going to call and confirm the res... So soon, dear? I'm going to confirm the reservation. Do you mind? Not at all. Just go right ahead and confirm any little thing that needs confirmed. Wonderful. And while you're at it, check on the rooms, too. Always got that bayonet fixed, haven't you? It's never stopped you from slipping past the sentry, has it? Welcome to sunny Italy. He was an officer. It was like magic. He would bring me eggs, chocolate and soup. Oh, how I love that American soup. Justin was alive and exciting, but sometimes he got sad, just like the others. So we comforted each other. So much comfort for such a young girl. They came into my life, they went out of my life. And three weeks later, I found I was going to have a baby. Ragazza mia. So I wrote to each one and told them my condition. And each one wrote back the same thing. Don't you worry, sweetheart baby. I'll take care of you. And they did. They sent me a check each month ever since. That's not ever since? For 20 years you received a check every month? For 20 years I received three checks every month. And you still don't know the father of your child? Of course I know him. I just don't know who he is. <laughs> Hey, Lieutenant, how are you? Sergeant, <laughs> nice to see you again. Nice to see you. <clears throat> uh, just uh, checking on my reservations. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, excuse me. But your husband, the brave Captain Campbell, which one was he? There was no husband. There was no captain. The name Campbell, where did you get that? From the soup. You name yourself a soup? I had to. The only other American name I knew was Coca-Cola. I couldn't call myself Mrs. Coca-Cola. Everything you made up, the name, the husband. But not the baby. That I didn't make up. My little Gia, for her I needed a name, a father, respect. You don't know this town, how the fat fingers used to point. Carla sold me, the alley cat they used to call me. To these people I'm going to tell I got a child with no husband and could be any one of three fathers? No, I don't tell them anything. Let those fat cows go jump in a zoo and float around. Calm yourself. I'm a lady now, as good as anybody. I had my baby in Florence, and when I came back, I was wearing widow's clothes. And I was mourning for my dear, dead, rich American husband. Captain Soup. Yes, and how different it was. Now it's uh, Buonasera, Mrs. Campbell. How is your daughter in the fine school in Switzerland, Mrs. Campbell? Buonasera this, Buonasera that. Everybody tells me Buonasera. Everybody but the Contessa. Not once has she ever said my name. But she, uh, does she uh, know? Of course she does not know. She's the one person who must never know. Gia will ever find out. Who is it? What do you want? Carla, baby. Is that you? This is me. Oh, it's you. It's so good to hear your voice again. Which one is it? I don't know. Who are you? How are you? I'm at the airport and I've only got a minute. Is it all right to talk? I mean, Gia, she's not in the room, is she? Oh, no, not in the room. But you did bring her back from Geneva. Of course. Does she have any idea who I am? Nobody has any idea who you are. Hey, look, we're going to stay in Rome tonight, and we're going to take the bus up in the morning. Be there around 5 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow at 5. Ciao, baby. Ciao. Tomorrow he'll be here, 5 o'clock. Uh, what will you tell him? Nothing. I won't be here. But you will tell him. Mrs. Campbell had to leave. She and her daughter both to see her poor sick aunt. But the aunt is better. She loves me. She'll get sick again. Hello? Oh, amore. Carla. Carla, darling. All I've thought about for weeks is you. A tiny white house. A delightful little white room where we used to... It's as though the years had melted away. I can see you standing there. What I'm trying to say is, I want two rooms, two baths, and a shower. Thank you. What did this one want? The same as before, except with two rooms, two baths, and a shower. <laughs> Carla! Carla mia! Oh, Carla! Oh, oh, put me down! Oh, Carla! Somebody's going somewhere? I am. But you just came back. What business is that of yours? Well, I only thought... You are not paid to think. But the Americans are coming. All the friends of your poor, brave husband. Don't you want to see them? Vittorio. You are so hard, so unfeeling. You don't see how painful it would be for me to meet them all again? Just when the scars of my grief are beginning to heal. Beginning? It's been 20 years. How do you know how long it takes scars to heal? What are you, a doctor? A professor of scar healing? Ah. Maybe you're right, Mrs. Campbell. But the Americans don't arrive until tomorrow. Late. Why drive through the treacherous mountains in the dark? Get a good night's sleep in your own bed. And in the morning, when you're fresh, then you can go off and heal your scars. It's been five weeks. Oh, oh, guarda che faccio! 
Cioè, cioè, beh, ogni volta è la stessa cosa. Ma io ho detto che mi sono andato a pensare, sai. Ho detto che me ne vado e me ne vado. Signore? Where's the nearest telephone? Over there, signore. No, no, I mean outside the hotel. Around the corner, signore, in Via Veneto. Ah, grazie. You're welcome, sir. Calm down. Oh, uh, honey, as soon as the room is made up, put the kids to bed. I I'll get them something like tea. Like what? Like apples. Apples? Oh, gee, honey, it's 3.30 New York time. They ought to have a little bite to eat before they go to bed. I know this little place on the Via Veneto. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I'll come with you. Didn't you hear what I just said? It's 3.30 New York time. You should be in bed. I don't want to go to bed the same time he does. Well, why not? I'm older. What difference does that make? I'm older than your mother. I go to bed the same time. I bet it wasn't easy at first. You hear that? Uh, Phil, look, let's not have discussions the whole trip. If the boy wants to go with you, you take him with you. Shirley, they got street walkers here. What's the difference? All you're buying is apples. I want to see the street walkers. Yeah, me too. You hear that? Sex criminals we're raising. I'll street walk you right into bed. You go with your father. You're spoiling this child. Phil, don't raise your voice. You'll leave emotional scars. Come on, man about town. Yes. Rome. From Rome. Hello? No, of course not. How could I go to sleep till I heard from you? It's going to be tougher than I thought. There's a posse following me, Shirley and the three kids. Nobody's letting me out of their sight. Whatever you want to do. I'm so excited, I can hardly wait. Till tomorrow, then. Ciao, carissimo. Who was that? Who was what? On the phone. Oh, it was nothing. It was um, the operator. Carissimo. I can hardly wait. Must be quite an operator. Who was it? It was Gia. Gia called. Oh, yes, from Rome, with a baritone voice. Now I see it all. Every month, that little visit to Florence, and then coming back with the fancy gifts. You never went to Florence. It was to Rome, to him. Florence. To collect the check for my poor husband's family. You know that. I know nothing. All these years, from the day I came here from Bordeaux, what do I know? Each day I'm dirt under the feet of the fine Mrs. Campbell, just her expert on grapes. <laughs> That's not all you're expert at. Oh, no. At night, when no one can see, then it's different. Then it's, oh, Vittorio, I love you. Vittorio, yours are the only eyes, the only ears, the only nose in the world, Vittorio. Now I find there's another nose somewhere. Who is he? A banker? Some dried up little prune with a cigar and a belly? Nobody. There is no other man. Huh. It's true. In all my life, no one has ever laid a hand on me, except you and the fathers of my child. Fathers? Uh, father. You make me so nervous. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Now come back to bed. No, thank you. For the fine Mrs. Campbell, I'm too low class. Come to bed. It's late. Hmm. Oh, yes, I'm lower class. But that one, what upper class he must be, to make you leave tomorrow. When the Americans come, when Gia comes. When Gia comes? Yes, like she said in the postcard. What postcard? From Gia, it came last week. Rosa! Huh? Rosa! Rosa! What has she done to you, this pig? Was there a postcard from Gia? Yes, I told you, and you threw it in the fireplace. Oh.
It was thoughtful of Vittoria to write me about the reunion. I can't wait to meet all my father's American friends. I will arrive Thursday afternoon. I cannot leave. If Gia is coming, I cannot leave. You had to write and tell her. What's the tragedy? Didn't go three years to school, suddenly he's a writer. Mr. Journalist, who appointed you to conduct a correspondence with my daughter? Somebody had to write. After all, she has no father. Hmm. The one thing she's not short of is fathers. Huh? I... I don't understand. Gia shouldn't meet the Americans. No. She shouldn't be proud to stand up and say, I'm Gia Campbell, the daughter of your brave captain. No, you idiot. You ridiculous, stupid ass. And shall I tell you why? Because there was no brave captain. There was no captain at all. Then what was there? One lieutenant, one sergeant, and a corporal. Tell him! San Forino, we're coming back. Kelly, Williams, Johnson, Bernstein, and Mac. Back once more to give you our thanks for the hospitality you gave to us Yanks. From New Jersey, Kansas, and Maine. Pennsylvania, Texas, and New York. We're here to tell the world we'll never let you down. San Marino, the great Italian we mean. A great Italian, yes, sir. A great Italian now. Hey! Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know why people bring kids along on a trip like this. Uh? Did you see that kid? He shot a gun off right in my ear. Fine manners. Will you hold it down? That's the way kids are. How would you know? Father of the Year. You keep reminding Mr. me. Mr. Fertility you? Symbol. Huh? One of these days I'll give you a surprise. Ferdinand the Bull. One of these days you might just be surprised. Yeah, I'll bet. Gia, my baby, how can I make you understand? I cannot see them. Don't you see, my darling? Your poor sweet father, he died. They lived. How could I stop myself from hating them? 
Why do the best always have to go first? Poor Mama. Of course, you mustn't stay. Then quickly, darling. Let's go quickly, eh? No, Mama, not me. You go, you must, but there's no reason for me to leave. But, but Gia... These were my father's friends. There are so many questions I want to ask about him. What he was like, what he thought, what he felt. I want to find out everything there is to know. Take the bags in the house. You're not going to go? My place is with you, darling. When you're asking all these questions. Oh, Mama. You wait over there with the girls, dear. I'll, I'll just pick up the baggage. I'll see you in a moment, huh? All right, dear. How about that Rosina? Did you catch that? Pretty nice. Still built like a national monument. Boy, we used to light up the sky. Some of those haystacks still have scorch marks. You gonna see her? You better believe it. Wish I could get away, but I brought my own MP with me. You still haven't learned how to get over the wall, huh? Now, you listen to me good. Two magic words. Beauty shop. Beauty shop? Well, what do you mean, beauty shop? You get your old lady to get a shampoo and set. You've got one hour. Cut shampoo and set. You got an hour and a half free and clear. You add a manicure, you got another 40, 50 minutes, depending on the condition of the cuticles. Gee, maybe I can get him to pull a tooth. Uh, why are you tiring yourself out doing that? I hear they have a wonderful beauty parlor right here in San Marino. And to what do I owe this sudden burst of solicitude? Well, we have to start somewhere, dear. Pronto. La patineria per cortesia. Mi prendo un appuntamento del perruchiera. Possibilmente subito? La signora Young. Grazie. Well, that's lucky. The porter said that they could probably take me right away. Actually, the beauty parlor is only around the corner, so it shouldn't take me too long. Wonderful. Excuse me. Where, what happened to my clothes? I thought you might like them pressed. They'll be back at 6.30. Well, arrivederci. Arrivederci. Now, sure, honey. I've never told you when to get your hair done, but... <laughs> I still say you ought to go to the beauty parlor. What the hell do you think I brought a wig for to sit in some steamy little beauty shop? I got such a headache from all those screaming brats. Should have stayed home. And how sorry would have been missed by one and all. Why don't you turn blue, fatso? Oh, honey. Why is it we can't go more than six words without having a beef? Eh? After all, what did I ask you to do? Take my laundry down to the river and pound it with rocks? All I want for you is to go to the beauty parlor so you look very special. And you know why? Because you are very special to me. I bought a wig. Oh, honey. Somewhere in Mexico, there's a little bald-headed old lady walking around. I want him to love your hair, not hers. <laughs> Walter, you're nuts. After all, honey, who else we got but each other, right? Oh, yeah, I know. We'll make it like another honeymoon. Oh, sunshine and bananas, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you call the beauty parlor, huh? Sure. Beautiful. Hey. Later, huh? <laughs> di nuovo che ci sono delle signore presenti. E eh, come sono presenti? E voglio che lei le mandi via. Mi spiace, signor Wallingham, ma questo è un conflitto sindacale. E io sono capo di Crow. Noi faremo? Voi non farete, farò io. 
Tú y yo somos fregados. Sí, es vero. Where, where? What? Let's go. Mommy said you charge for you for the war. What? Mommy said I... I... Come on, you guys. Daddy's ready. What do you call him? I mean, where do you get to see a new country and a whole new culture at the same time? And you know what I'm really looking forward to? Is uh, that uh, uh, our treasures tour in Florence tomorrow. I hear you can pick up the most beautiful, marvelous bargains there. Really? What are you interested in? Painting or sculpturing? Bedroom slippers. They do this Florentine leather work up there. I mean, you could die from it. Why don't you go up there with me tomorrow? I'll try. Oh, by the way, uh, my name is Shirley Newman. Uh, my husband is Phil. Phil Newman, he, he was a corporal here. I'm Lauren Young. My husband was a lieutenant, I'm afraid. Just. Oh, but I bet Phil knows him anyway. <laughs> when I get back to the hotel, I'll just have to ask him a... Oh, uh, don't look now, and don't let her know that you're looking at her. But isn't that young girl a typical Italian-type beauty? I'd better warn you, I speak English. I'm so sorry. You know, I thought that you belonged to the village. I do. I do, but I'm half American. Oh, really? My father was in the squadron. Captain Eddie Campbell. Really? I, I go to school in Switzerland, the American school in Geneva. Oh, the American school in Geneva. just after they were married. But his family's been supporting us ever since. They've been marvelous. What a beautiful story. It's very touching. And your mama? After all these years, what happened to your poor mama? This is my mother. This is mama? Uh, oh, Mrs. Campbell, excuse me. Uh, I, I'm Mrs. Newman, and uh, this is Mrs. Young. How do you do? How do you do? Hello. Hello. What a beautiful story. <laughs> and your daughter, what a lovely daughter you have. And, you know, she's a link. You know, that's what she is. She is a living link between the squadron and the village. All these years, nobody ever knew about it? Well, it's a very private matter. Not anymore, it isn't. I'm on the Women's Auxiliary Committee, and I'm going to see that our people know about this. Oh, don't, don't bother. And, and what's more, I am going to see that they do something about it. Right? Right. Thank you. Oh. Da questo luogo, dove regna il silenzio della morte, da questo luogo, dove un giorno un furrio la lotta, dove risuona ancora oggi l'eco dei cannoni, Qui dove tanti giovani, venuti dall'altra sponda dell'oceano, con l'ideale nel cuore di portare aiuto agli oppressi, e invece trovarono l'olocausto della loro vita. Onnipotente Dio, noi eleviamo la nostra umile preghiera. Concedi a questi giovani eroi l'eterna ricompensa del loro sacrificio. Essi caddero qui campo di battaglia in terra straniera e in quel momento di estremo bisogno non ci fu la mano gentile della mamma lontana che asciugasse la loro fronte insanguinata che potesse loro dare una goccia d'acqua oh there she is the one i told you about from the beauty shop isn't she gorgeous yeah imagine supporting the two of them for all these years it must have cost somebody a fortune yeah Misericordioso Signore, devotamente ti preghiamo, possa il sacrificio della loro giovane vita essere una lezione a questo mondo sconvolto, la guerra è distruzione e morte. Oh Signore, Amen. And now we say welcome to the 293rd Squadron. Welcome home. Yes? This is your home, your second home. For though you lived here only a short while, for many of you, 
And for all of us, it was a lifetime. And when you went back to America, we really did not feel that you had gone. Because so many of you had left a little something of yourselves behind. like a documentary. Yeah. Just pray I get through this night, because tomorrow morning I take GN leave, early. find one American who's, who's even heard of Papa. How soon they forget. But don't feel bad. First thing tomorrow morning, we'll go to see Aunt Celestina, yes? Aunt Celestina? She's very sick, I promised. But Mama, Mama, the Americans are Please here. Please me, darling. You said you had something to tell me. We leave in the morning. We'll drive and we'll talk, yes? All right, Mama. So now we'll go home. Well, look who's here, Mrs. Eddie Campbell. I'm Walter Braddock. Oh, you remember Eddie's friend. Hello, Mr. Braddock. Hello, Mrs. Campbell. You're looking great. Uh, oh, don't tell me this is Eddie's kid. My daughter, Gia. Gia, this is Mr. Braddock. Good evening, Mr. Braddock. Oh, hello, Gia. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Just beautiful. <laughs> I'm an old friend of your father's, honey. Uh, a very old friend. Hey, now, look, I don't know how you, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about dance with all the fellas, but, uh, huh? I'd love to. dance well, Mr. Braddock. Mr. Braddock? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You dance well. Yeah? Hey, Twinkle Toes, that's me. The Nijinsky and the Steel Mills. You know, there's where I'm from, Gary, Indiana. It's a Polish neighborhood, but I was really born in Jersey. Then I moved to Gary when I married Fritzy. Fritzy, that's my wife. She's over there, the little redhead. We got a little bar. We're doing very nice. Flaming torches on the outside, neon lights. We do a great dinner business. Shrimp cocktails and frog's legs. Hey, it's a classy joint. That's nice. This was one of them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me about him. Who, your father? Well, he was just sort of your average nice guy, sort of modest. Handsome? Well, he was no movie star or nothing, but he was just your average nice-looking fella. Was he tall? Oh, yeah, and he wore clothes nice. Uh, virile. That's the word for him, virile. You must have known him very well. Well enough to tell you this, that if he was here tonight, holding you the way I am, and looking at you, 
He'd be the proudest guy in the whole world. Thank you. Sorry about this house, no, and how's tomorrow? When? Morning? Not too early. 11 o'clock. Fine. Chia is marvelous. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. How can you let him come to the house? Because I told you, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> Permission to take over, Sergeant. Hey, thank you, Miss Campbell. Thank you. Him too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about him. Well, what have you heard already? Not very much. I've been told he was a very handsome man. Are you? Handsome, huh? Well, I guess you could call him handsome, but... I've also been told that he was a very virile man. Virile? <laughs> Now, what else do you know about him? In the morning, not too early. Oh, ciao, baby. Ciao. Tell you how close we were. Dancing with you is like, well, like dancing with my own kid. Do you enjoy dancing with your own children? Not too much. They're boys. <laughs> Mind if I pull rank on you, Corporal? Take good care of her, Lieutenant. She's a fine girl. The third one? Yes. Handsome man? Yes. He's well built. Yes. He's a fairy. <laughs> I must congratulate you, Mrs. Campbell, on your daughter, a lovely, lovely child. I've got to see you tomorrow alone. When? I'm going to be stuck with the kids uh, sometime late in the morning. Perfect. Perfect. I told you I'm not going to be there. Hmm. From what I gather, he and my mother undoubtedly made a very beautiful couple. They undoubtedly made a very beautiful daughter. Thank you. It's been very pleasant. I hope we meet again. So do I, Gia. Good night. Good night. Mama, three of them, and they all knew Papa. Oh, that's nice. So now we'll go home, and in the morning we'll go to see Aunt Celestine. Oh, must we? These men have been so wonderful. And Aunt Celestine, a sick old lady. Can we disappoint her? No. Good. But... So we leave early in the morning. Come. announcement to make. Oh, uh, just a minute, please. Uh, Senora, Senora Campbell. Oh, just a minute, please. I don't know if any of you know it, but in this town, there is a lovely, lovely living symbol of what this reunion is really all about. Yes, right here is a beautiful young girl, the daughter of a lady of San Perino and a captain in our squadron who died in heroic battle. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I present Mrs. Carla Campbell and Miss Gia Campbell. Uh, uh, this is a beautiful story that we found out quite by accident in the beauty hall of this afternoon. Well, I personally took the information before the executive committee and a decision was reached that henceforth and from now on, our squadron's chapel will be known as the Eddie Campbell Memorial Chapel. Well, oh, oh, by the way, uh, I was told by the mayor 
here this afternoon that under ordinary circumstances, the Contessa is uh, supposed to accept the plaque at the dedication services tomorrow. But I am sure that she will want to step aside so that Mrs. Campbell will accept the plaque herself. Mrs. Campbell, will you accept? Well, I... I will accept. She will accept. <laughs> Why did you do it? Now you can't leave San Forino. The three Americans will be here. Gia will be here. Well, say something. Pass the cheese. Oh, how can you eat at a time like this? If I stop, I'll scream. But why did you? Shh. That's why I did it for her. And because of that look on the Contessa's face. Once I my name, huh? Now she'll see the Eddie Campbell Memorial Chapel until her eyes choke. She'll find out who Mrs. Campbell is. Oh, sure, she'll find out. And Gia will find out. The whole town will find out. Oh, you're going to be famous. <laughs> Everything is your business. <laughs> Instant committee woman. Private memorials for unknown soldiers. Why are you making such a thing? It was a very sweet idea. Yes, well, maybe the woman's trying to live a private life, eh? Shh. Did she object? Well, maybe the woman's husband's her own private property, right? But no, you gotta mix in. Boy, you got a mouth. The whole north of Italy could fall in. Philip, you're making me very angry. Really? How would you like every time you walk down the street to be reminded of your dead husband? How would I know? You never gave me a chance to find out, God forbid. Very nice. Very nice for my wife. I never thought that I would say such a thing to my own husband with my own children sleeping in the next room. It's all right, honey. It's okay. Uh, Forget it. I'm sorry. I, I did it for you for the good of your squad. I know, honey. I'm sorry. I, I, I only wanted to make you happy. Shirley, darling, it's okay. You no, know, I'm always thinking of your happiness. I know, but look, Shirley, you know me by now. I don't ask for much. When I wake up in the morning and just find my glasses, that's enough happiness for one day. <laughs> hey, what kind of an electric toothbrush is this, eh? It hit me right in the eye. It's a water pick. I bought it at the airport in New York. It sprays the gums. Oh, it's a lucky thing I'm not blind. Every new gadget that comes out, you got to have. Oh, boy, aren't you a bundle of laughs tonight? What's the matter with you, anyway? You were a doll this afternoon. Well, it was that Newman broad with the big mouth. Who told her to put her name on the chapel? What difference does it make to you? You're not Eddie Campbell. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Sheesh. Uh, I'm sorry, honey. It's been a long day. Yeah. You know, when you were dancing with that pretty kid, I couldn't help thinking that if we had one of our own, she would have been just about that age. Yeah, I know. Oh, you had such a look on your face. You never let up for a minute, do you? What did I say? You like to rub my nose in it, right? Well, did you ever stop to think that maybe it's your fault? Huh? That maybe you're the one who can't have any kids? All right, Fatso. I didn't bring it up, but since you did, let's get one thing straight. The doctor's reports say you're the one who can't have a kid, not me. Yeah, well, doctors can be wrong. Doctors can be wrong. What are you, some kind of a nut, Jekyll and Hyde? One minute you're a puppy dog, the next minute you're an animal. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too. Okay, we're here to have a good time. Let's have a good time. All right, let's okay. have a good time. What do we do in the morning? I can't. You can't what? Whatever it is, I can't. I got a meeting. All right, then I won't eat. You won't what? Whatever it is you can't, I won't. Well, then don't. I won't. Okay, anything you say. Just let's have a good time. All right, let's have a good time. Okay. What about tomorrow, Florence? I'm uh, afraid not. <clears throat> they put me on the steering committee. Tomorrow morning's the first meeting. My. Look, I didn't ask to be on the committee. They just put me there. Of course they did, dear. Just like they put you on that council in Albany. The one that takes you away so regularly on weekends. All right. What's it all about? Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, I adore being ignored all evening while you get cozy on a dance floor with some Italian tootsie half your age. I think it's... Hey, hey, you know, that, you're out of, that's an indecent thing to say. I happen to know that girl's father rather well. 
He's a hell of a nice guy. What about the mother? She looks as if she might have been a bit knowable herself. How far do you intend carrying this? That's about it, dear. Lauren, I'm no saint. But whatever I have done, that's my hang-up. None of it was meant to hurt you. Happy committee meeting, dear. Thank you. She knows every gallery in Florence. She'll be a fine guide. Yes? She'll be there when the bus leaves. That gets her out of the house. Brilliant. Gia? Yes, Mama? Darling, they called me and asked if you would be a guide on the tour to Florence tomorrow. And you know me, uh, soft-hearted, I said you would go. I don't know if so I can. Are you, ready yet? Huh? you don't know if you can. Hello? Yes? What? From Paris? Gia Campbell? Yes, she is. Uh, Hello? I'm Mama. Oui, chérie. Tout m'a manqué aussi. Beaucoup. Comment? Tu as obtenu la concession? Brésil? Mais quand, chérie? Après demain? Tôt. Je dois en parler à ma mère. Appelle-moi demain. Au revoir. Oui, je t'aime aussi. This is something new, the smoking? A couple of months. The call from Paris. A friend? Yes. A good friend? Yes, Mama. A boy? A man. How old? 27. Oh, that's a good age. And Brazil? You mentioned Brazil. I didn't think you understood French. Brazil is the only French word I know. What was it about Brazil? He's going there. He's a professor. He's been given a research grant. He leaves the day after tomorrow from Paris. And uh, he wants you to go with? Drop out of school and go with him? Yes. Does he love you? He says so. And you? Yes, very much. And when would you get married? I said, when would you get married? He's already married, Mama. No! What am I raising? Running off to Brazil, affairs with married men, smoking cigarettes, to break up a man's family. Mama, you don't understand. It's already broken up. They're separated. You're not going to drag your father's name in and out of married men's beds. Don't you dare say that to me. And don't you dare raise your voice to me. The day before your father died, you know what he said to me. If we ever have a daughter, I'd like her to be called Gia. Gia Campbell. It's a fine name. You never mentioned that. Maybe a Gia would run off with a married man, but not a Campbell. Because Campbell is a noble name, a proud name, a name of quality, a name that means something. To me, you owe nothing, but to your poor dead father, this name must be respected. All right, 
Mama, I won't go. I won't go! Oh, a married man. Did you ever hear of a day like this? <sighs> Only one thing can be worse than today. What's that? Tomorrow. I don't want a lot of Lauren. Who needs our treasure? You do. A little culture will do you some good. Hey, maybe we'll get to see some of them naked statues. Did you hear that? That kid will be in jail before he's 12. Children, into the bus. Move it, move it. Come on, move it, move it. Oh, no. Run, everybody, into the bus. Into the bus, into the bus. Bye, honey. Oh, Phil, I almost forgot. Would you give this to that, Mrs. Braddock? At the hotel. Yeah. The little redhead from Gary, Indiana. I'll take care of it. Have a good trip, honey. You too. Buy yourself something pretty, darling. You know where to cash this. Ciao, Mama. Be at the house in a few minutes. What? Oh. Oh, oh, listen. This is for Mrs. Braddock. A fish, Mrs. Braddock, from my wife, Mrs. Newman. You know Mrs. Newman. You the... Oh, uh... uh ciao! Would you call me a cab? Cab. Taxi. I think you have Newman, Newman Phil. Wife's name is Shirley. Uh, shoe business, um, uh, wholesale. Um, uh, Trenton, New Jersey. Children's names Lenny, Buddy, Brucey. <laughs> Mrs. Braddock? Yes? For you, for Mrs. Newman. Uh, where does Mrs. Campbell live? Nineteen fifty-six, pull the ligament on the golf course. It's him. Oh, put away the letters. Who oh, also the others? Wait! Oh, there's no time. Put them in the bedroom. Close the door. Phil! Huh? Oh, Walter. Oh, Carla, baby, you're looking beautiful. Oh, come, come on, come on inside. I want to, I want to talk to you. Hey. Will you look at this place? It's a palace. I mean, at only $85 a month? How'd you do it? Oh, well, I... Uh, f from the insurance. What insurance? Uh, I was hit by a taxi. Where? In the piazza. Why did you write? Why did you tell me? Oh, how could I burden you? You've done so much already. Baby, come here to me. Watch it. <laughs> oh, don't you know? What I've done is nothing. Oh. You're the mother of my kid. Don't you know what that means? I mean, I made that kid. Oh. And you know what that did for me? It made my life, that's all. Honest. Like every Sunday when Fritzy's truck driver brothers would come over and raise me. Hey, what's the matter? Want no kids? Why don't you get some monkey glands? <laughs> Big joke. Like it was my fault. But you and I, we know different, don't we, honey? I mean, we know different. Hey, call a baby. There's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for you. Walter, there's only one thing I want you to do for me. Oh, you name it. I want you to go. What? No. I didn't think it would hurt this much. What, the taxi? No, seeing you again. Yeah, but I did. Oh, how I fought this. I didn't want to stay. I was going to leave. Oh. Rosa, 
Rosa, tell him. Tell him. Was I going to leave or not? Tell him. She was going to leave. You see? Would she lie to you? She knows. How much can one person keep inside? Oh, Walter, after all these years, to be so near and, and, and yet so far, to have so little of you when, when I want so much. I'm only one woman, but my heart aches for three. Be stronger than me. Leave now. I, I cannot take any more of this. Okay. Okay. But listen, now there's, there's just one thing. Yes? Now, Gia's going to college this fall. And I was wondering maybe if she came to the States. Maybe the University of Chicago. Oh, that sounds nice. You know, that way maybe I can come visit her on weekends and make out like I'm, I'm a friend of her father's. I'll talk to Gia. Oh, will you? Yes. The insurance man from the accident. I don't want him to see you. Yeah. He has such a big mouth. Wait here. I'll get rid of him, huh? Okay. Carla. What I say? The insurance man is inside about the accident. What accident? Oh, it's nothing. I was hit by truck. Uh, what? He's the worst gossip. Go around the block. Hurry. Hurry. Go Hurry. around the block. Hurry. right now. Oh, Carla, can I stay a few minutes? How cruel can you be? Okay, I'll go. Oh, thank you. But you won't forget about the college. Oh, no, dear. But now, please. So long, sweet potato. <sighs> He hungs after I know the man is here. Oh, uh, Phil Newman, wife Shirley, children Lenny, Buddy Bruce, all oh, such names. Oh, oh just Carla, been... darling, isn't this fantastic? I can't believe. How are you? Uh, you look so mild. Look at you. Look at this place. How did you manage all this on $140 a month? Oh, well, I. I um, sometimes I make sandals for the tourists. Oh, you poor kid. Well, those days are over. I have a plan. Uh, yeah, who's she? Rosa, my maid. Maid? She only comes once a week, doesn't do windows. Oh. What, could we be alone? Oh, yes. Mm -mm, Rosa? I think that when you hear my idea, that you would really be excited. What I thought... You're more beautiful than I even imagined. Uh, you, you have a plan. I have a plan. When I saw you last night, the wheels started to turn. And I knew the answer. I want you to come to New York. New now, York? I'll arrange for Gia to go to an Eastern college. You'll have your own apartment, penthouse overlooking the park, car and chauffeur, and we'll have each other. I'll see you three times a week, sometimes even weekends. Mm -hmm. What do you say, Carl? Oh. oh, Justin, Justin, how many years I've been holding this oh, inside. Uh, darling, no scratching. It's very hard to explain. Oh, I missed you. Oh, but is isn't too good either, you know. Justin. Oh, Justin. Justin. Carla, control oh. yourself. Oh, it's been 20 years. 
Then a few more days won't matter, right? Don't leave me now. Well, I have this committee meeting. Oh, then you go. But for God's sake, go quickly. Yes, maybe I'd better. Not that way. Why not? The insurance man is coming about the accident. What accident? A, a, a train hit my truck. What? It's nothing. Out the back door. How do you like that? What? He's here. Who? The insurance man. Why all this cloak and dagger stuff? To protect you. He's so nosy. He never stops talking. What's he going to talk about? He never met me. This is silly. I don't know why. Well, Look, Carlo. Oh, Justin, must you go? Ah, yes, Carla. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, New York, huh? Ne next month? Oh. Yeah, you... Charles! Charles! Oh. I know he's here, stupid. And that one won't stay in one place. Phil, uh, I'm Mrs. Braddock. He's not here. Mrs. Newman sent me? Uh, he's not here either. Is something the matter? Oh, no, 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 nothing, thank you. Oh, what a lovely place. Why? Oh, may I come in? May I? Uh... Oh, belly. Very, very belly. Oh, I just dropped by to tell you that, uh, see, all the American wives are invited to tea at the Contessa's. Oh, the Contessa's? Yes. And Mrs. Newman suggested that you join us. After all, you're an American wife, aren't you? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, are you sure nothing's the matter? You seem upset. Well, it's uh, just seeing so many Americans all at once. It makes me remember too much. So if, uh, if you would excuse me. I... Oh, I understand. Maybe another time we, we can sit and talk. Yes. Maybe at the compass. Yes, maybe at the tea. Yes. yes. Oh, <gasps> oh um, Mrs. Braddock, I, I, I hope you will understand. I'm very superstitious. Would you mind going out the back door? The back door? Yes, I, I know it sounds silly, but we have a custom. When an unexpected guest goes out the same door he came in, it's bad luck. Oh, I never heard that. Uh, it's Italian. Crazy, huh? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> this way, please, if you don't mind. No, no, of course not. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Campbell. Bye. Giorno. <laughs> <sighs> Will it never stop? Fear! Carl, uh, up! Hey, what was with that back and forth? I started to feel like a yo-yo. The insurance man, he finally went out the back way. Oh, good. Carl, uh, Carl. Oh, it's so good to see you again. And last night when I saw Gia, I... Oh, before I forget. Here. Honey, there's something I want you to sign. Sign what? You see, this makes you the Italian representative of my company, Shoko Shoes. Uh. See, in this case, in case anything happens to me... Mm. Grazie. This ensures that you and Gia will continue to get the checks. Oh, you're okay. very sweet. Yeah. Well, now we got time to get acquainted again. Let me see now. Shirley's on the art tour. Uh, after that, she's on to the Contessa's for tea. The sports picnic. Ooh, I could skip that. Baby! We got nothing but time. I'm glad we have time. So we can make our plans. Yes, plans. When I saw you last night and when you looked at me, I knew that you knew that the time had come to make the move. Move? What move? Uh, the divorce. I, what, 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 are you, what are you talking about? After all these years, don't we owe it to ourselves to have a home of our own? It's a nice name, Carla Newman. Yeah, it's a nice... But I didn't know you had this in mind, honey. You don't have a word, because uh, I, Carla Newman would never... Not, and I, uh, listen, pull yourself together. I understand. This is hard for you. But don't worry, I'll tell Shirley. No. Sometimes it's better if the two women talk. No, no. No, no. Not with Shirley. You don't know her. She's a hitter. I'm not afraid. You're worth it. Look, Carla, don't accept the apple cart, honey. There's nothing in the world I wouldn't do for you, but how, how, how would this look back home? I'm a scoutmaster. 
But we only have one life. We deserve to be happy. No, no, listen, Tommy, listen. One of us has to be strong. I'm just a woman. Now, I'll be strong enough for the both of us. Now, look, baby, you can't do this. It's a crazy, romantic, ridiculous dream. Oh, Phil, Phil. Carla, give me up. I'm no good for you. Oh, oh, Carla, look, I've got to go now. Maybe it's better. Yes. Um, promise me one thing. Yes? Promise you'll try to forget me. I mean, on a physical level. You think that's easy? Oh, you make it. Crazy kid. <laughs> Caraggio, Caraggio. Ah! <laughs> Twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand lira. There you are, Miss Campbell. My regards to your mother. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if you could uh, cash a personal traveler's check for me. I'm a Mrs. Newman from Trenton, New Jersey. I have identification with me. Yes. Mrs. Philip Newman. Yes. Uh, oh, did you know my husband? Oh, not personally, but we have been dealing with a Mr. Philip Newman for many, many years. Oh, it can't possibly be the same, Phil Newman. <laughs> One minute. Hmm? Philip Newman, 2931 Passaic Boulevard, Trenton, New Jersey, right? Well, that certainly is his business address. <laughs> He's been one of Mrs. Campbell's best customers. Mrs. Campbell? Customers? Yes, from San Forino. Oh, yes, <laughs> that Mrs. Campbell. <laughs> He's been buying her wine for 20 years. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> How much money do you need? Well, uh, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, I, I've been thinking of reducing, uh, uh, you know, making a tour of those health spas. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, leaflets on uh, Monte Catini or uh, places like that? Certainly, Mrs. Newman. One minute. Mm. Here you are, Mrs. How are you? Fine, thank you. Mother asked if I'd check on an item in her ledger for her. Certainly, Gia. I happen to have it right here. Thank you. One hour. The letters. What letters? 
from the fathers. Nobody put them away. Oh, Gio will find them. Quick, before the bus comes back. Right. Good job, Gary Bedacci. <laughs> Lanny said you wanted to see me right away, so I rushed them. What's the matter? Nothing. I wonder how you were, darling. <laughs> how you're feeling. And why you've been sending some Italian brought a check every month for the last 20 years. Well, where did you get such an idea? Phil, Phil, I saw it with my own eyes in black and white in the express office. Why would you want to go to the express office on a nice day like this? Phil! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sit down. I'm your wife. You can tell me about it. Well, I guess you had to find out about it sometime. And now a bond of 20 years is broken. You send bonds too? A blood bond. My blood. You knew I won the Purple Heart, didn't you? Yeah, from a burn on the arm. Yeah, but you never knew how I got that burn on the arm. How I was pulled from a fiery airplane by the bravest, sweetest, most beautiful man God ever created. Eddie Campbell. You never mentioned anything. Of course not. Me. Because one week later, Eddie got it. The big L. L. Flackle. Well, call me a sentimental fool if you want, but we had a thing in those days. We never talked about a dead buddy. Didn't you see Hell's Angels? That was a different war. What difference does it make? The thing is that Eddie was no longer around, and gosh, how I missed him. The little things he used to do, the way he'd climb into the cockpit, put his chewing gum on his helmet, pull down his goggles and say, OK, guys, let's get one for the Gipper. Wasn't that from a Pat O'Brien movie? Details. My heart is breaking. She's hitting me with details. Look, Shirley, I'll try to explain to you. Eddie had married this young Italian girl, and she was expecting his kid. My best friend's kid. He wasn't around anymore. Well, hang it all. I'd had to do something about it. If it was the other way around, Eddie would be sending you the checks today. And that was the bond. Philip Newman. Philip Newman, I think that is the most beautiful story I ever heard. Nah, just common decency. It's funny you never really know a man. You live with him for years and suddenly he's not a man anymore. He is a giant. Honey. With a heart as big as a mountain. Oh, come on, Cheryl. When I think of the thing that the three of you have done... Now stop it, honey. You mean... The three of us? Don't worry. I saw the other two names at the express office. The same thing month after month, year after year. A check for Mrs. Campbell. How oh, you all must have loved that boy. You know, and I didn't even know that you knew Braddock and Young. Uh, Braddock and Young? Now, don't you pretend it's nothing. <laughs> what you three boys have done, Phil, it's rich and wonderful. It makes me proud to be an American. What's the matter with you? You look sick. No, no, it's just that when somebody finds out something they weren't supposed to know about, it's, uh, it's uh... I'll tell you what it is. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, honey, look, I've got to go back to the committee meeting. I know the few things to work out, and we'll talk later, huh? Daddy. What? You're not just daddy. You're big daddy. How about that? Oh, yes. My daughter goes to school in Switzerland. A very fancy school. Of course, I wanted her to go to a local school. But my husband's family, they said, only the best. <laughs> they are wonderful, wonderful people, the Campbells. People of quality. For my... For my daughter, they said, nothing is too good. Nothing. They 
won't have to be a real lady. Gia? 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 Gia, open the door. Gia! Gia, come on. Oh, Gia. Gia. Vittorio. Oh, Vittorio. Gia! Gia! Si? To Paris with a married man. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> That's all I need now. Someone to tell me how he told me. Hello, operator. This is an emergency. Get me the police in Santa Anselmo. Stop her. She stole the car. Yes, put her in jail. You can't do this. For one night? Why not? Your own daughter? Tomorrow, when she cools off. When the Americans go, then we will talk. But Gia in jail, not even the lowest Be of the lowest. Be careful. Low Stop her, yes, but go to her. Hold her in your arms, explain. Not a night in jail. It'll do her good. I'm only thinking of her. Oh, no, I know what you are thinking of. What you are always thinking of. I told you, be careful. The fine Mrs. Campbell, eh? The buona sera, Mrs. Campbell. That people should think you are something you know you are not. But I tell you, even the lowest peasant, the worst woman off the street, would not put a child like Gia in jail, not even for a minute, to cover up a lie like this. You will get out of my house. Gladly. You will never again touch my grapes, my sheets, or my truck. Delighted. You're fired! The sweetest word I ever heard. I can't believe how I can't believe it. I was just with her this morning, and she said... Oh, well, wait a minute. You were with her this morning? But I was there this morning. You? I had to leave on account of some insurance man. I couldn't get in on account of an insurance man. I wonder who the insurance man was. You too? That's our collar. Two doors, no waiting. Doesn't seem possible. All the beautiful letters she's written. A correction. Not written mimeograph. I had her on some kind of a pedestal, like she was, uh... Some kind of Snow White. Hmm. Only with Snow White, the other dwarves, they knew about each other, right? Jeez. You know what we are? Saints. That's what they are, saints. We're not married to ordinary men. Just think about it all these years, month in, month out. Not telling a soul, supporting a, a dead buddy's wife. When I think about it, when I think about it, I, I, I get goose pimples over my entire body. I, no, no, really, no, I hate to disappoint you, but it couldn't be Walter. I mean, we never made any money up until this year. Yeah, no, you, you, uh, uh, it's uh, certainly out of character for my boy. He never gives a little unless he gets a little. You want proof? Hey! I'll, I'll show you. I'll give you proof. I'll show you. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Uh, uh, pronto! Pronto! Senta! Uh, uh, Il apertori? Uh, 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 Paul Inglés? 
Three lessons, Berlitz. And the, uh, hello, uh, Pranto, uh, Pepperboard, uh, uh, Il Internationale uh, Espresso Office in Firenze. That's Florence. All right, gentlemen, read them and weep. You averaged 85 a month, you 115, me 140. Which, over 20 years, compounded at 6% interest, would come to $197,000? $197,000. We paid more war damages than Germany. My husband wanted me to make sure that those uh, checks for Mrs. Campbell, that they were arriving promptly the first of every month. Uh, they are, good. And uh, those two other gentlemen, Mr. Braddock and Mr. Young, what about their checks? Every month, like clockwork, signora. Hello? Hello? Are you still there, Mrs. Newman? Hello? Grazie. Grazia, very much. I'll be damned. Why didn't they tell us something? Because I'll tell you. They are still Boy Scouts. <laughs> still full of schoolyard ideals. And they're still playing movies. You know, Hell's Angels with the chewing gum on the goggles. Uh, you don't talk about a dead body. <laughs> uh, sentimental slobs, that's what they are. Uh, they're... Three big grown-up kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chumps, idiots, you understand? Dumb dumbs. To think that I personally paid how much? Forty-one thousand dollars. What are you beefing about? I gave forty-seven thousand dollars. Six thousand more than you. What do you want? Change? Hey, take it easy, fellas. We're all in this together. It's a joint venture. Ooh, that car. Gentlemen, I suggest we go and have a chat with our little care package. Yeah. Let's go. Daddy! Daddy, I need money. We gave already. I have to find Walter, Mrs. Newman. Call me Shirley. Shirley, Shirley, he has to know. But I know, and that it's all right. <laughs> First... We should go see Mrs. Campbell. You know, mm. together as a group, I think that as fellow women, we should tell her we understand everything. You know, as fellow women. Yes, we should. Why don't we just do that? Hospital? She's in the hospital. Gia. Where? San Anselmo. Tell me, where and when did it happen? Yes? And the girl, how bad is she hurt? The girl is not hurt at all. It's the car. That's what's in the hospital. I know she wants to leave, but you must keep her there. I don't care if nothing is wrong with her. Find something, but keep her there until her mother comes. Wait here. All together? All right, never mind that. Where is she? She's not here. Uh, she went to San Anselmo. San Anselmo? Sure, San Anselmo, for the Czech of the Month Club Festival. 
Oh, no, no, no. She went to see she in the hospital. Hospital? Uh, there was an accident. Oh, come on, let's go. San Anselmo. Well, no, 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 no. No, no, she's all right. You don't understand. She just... <laughs> Buongiorno. Oh, so together. Oh, uh, that's all right. Is uh, Mrs. Campbell at home? No, no. She she had to go to um. Oh, uh, she will be back in time for the memorial ceremony, though, won't she? Well, uh, well uh, I, I don't... if we should miss her, you give her a message. You tell her we know the whole story, and it's perfectly all right. You know the whole story. That's right. Everything you know. We think so. Oh, it's. <laughs> Wonderful for American ladies to be so understanding. <laughs> well, you know, it could have happened to any woman. Oh, of course it could. But she was a child of 16 years old, warm and wild. How could she know which one was the father? <laughs> oh, and for you to understand, it's beautiful, because they, your husbands, needed comfort, and she needed comfort, so they gave each other... They... It's beautiful, isn't it? Where's Mrs. Campbell? San Anselmo. They're all meeting. The mother, the daughter, the fathers at the hospital. Shall we, lady? Yeah, uh, uh, Saints, huh? Uh, but, uh, what, what did you... I don't understand it. What is it? <laughs> If anything happens to my kid... His kid? What happened to my stock in this corporation? It makes you think there's anything wrong with the kid, hmm? Look, they've lied to us for 20 years. Why should they start telling the truth now? That's... Yeah, that makes sense. Gets them out of town. They wait till we leave town. Then the checks keep coming, business as usual. You think the kid's in on it, too? Sure. She's got your eyes. Shifty. Jeez. That's the lowest. Using my kid. Again, his kid. All right, you want the kid? Tell you what you do. Give me $47,000. She's yours. I was so worried. Darling, are you all right? The arms, the legs, can you bend everything? I'm quite all right, Mama. Oh, thank God. Are you sure you're all right? They arrested me. Oh, those crazy police. They said I stole the car. Oh, we'll sue them, darling. They said a woman called and told them. Oh, those poor police. The same woman who took money from three men under false pretenses, letting each one think he was my father, making my whole life a rotten lie. Gee, don't talk like that. It's not nice. Not nice? That's funny coming from you. Get dressed, baby. On the way back, we'll talk. You think I'd go back? But the school. You'll go back to school. I'm going to Paris and then to Brazil. With a married man. Does that shock you, Mama? Of course it does. After all, Gia Campbell with that fine family name wouldn't do a thing like that. But I'm not Gia Campbell. I'm Gia Nobody. Just like you, an off-the-street nobody. Married man, I'm an amateur. You had three of them. I only have one, but at least it's honest. You don't know about me. And you don't want to know. No, I don't want to know. Then go! 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 Campbell. Got a minute. I'm sure you remember us, Mrs. Campbell. Your own private anti-poverty program? The Idiot's Branch of the Bank of America. The Mother's Aid Society. Santa's Little Helpers. Suppose we start with a game of 20 questions, like how long did you think this little buggy ride was going to last? Or which one of us really is the father? Assuming that one of us is the father. All right. 
You want me to tell you who the father is? I'll tell you. How the hell should I know? That's who he is. There were three of you in ten days. And when I found out I was going to have a baby, what did you want me to do? Pick one of your names out of a hat? You. You would have wanted him to support your child. And you. Maybe you would have liked him to pay for your baby. How dare you ask me who is the father? What kind of father? You think because you send a check every month that makes you a father? Where were you when she had the earache, the measles, the 12 stitches in her knee? Where were you when she came home crying because a boy made fun of her? Okay. You want to be a father? Toss a coin. Whoever wins, congratulations. Here's your first problem. Your daughter is not going back to school. She's running off to Brazil with a married man. Let me know how you make out. Come on. Anjou 4590, in Paris. And quickly, please. Si, senorita. All right, what's this all about? What do you mean you're running away with a married man? And you get that idea right out of your head. You're going back to Geneva, young lady. I am not. Oh, yes, you are. I'll go where I damn, please. Did you ever hear a girl should talk to her parents like that? Ridiculous. And don't worry about your money. You'll get back every cent. That's not why we're here. Every penny that was extorted from you. Turn around. You're talking to your flesh and blood. One of us is your father. Then two of you turn around. Now, you're not running away with nobody. I'll do what I want to. As far as I'm concerned, you're three strangers, and what I do is none of your business. Can you believe that a child would speak to our fathers like that? Would you please talk to her and... Well, girls, it looks like we're just in time for our meeting of the clan. So, speak up, fatso. Don't talk to me like that in front of my daughter. Again, it's his daughter. That's right. My daughter. Anything you want to say, Papa? Not now, Lauren. And as far as you're concerned, Mr. Hell's Angels, just don't ever touch me again. Your laundry will be done and your dinner will be ready. But as for your connubial pleasures, you That's just... That's all you can think about when this kid's about to run off with a married man? Whoa, whoa, hold it. Gia, listen to me carefully. What you're about to do could affect your entire life. I hope so. You can't do this. Gia, I'm talking to you as a father. It's a little late for that, isn't it? Whatever you think, all these years, I've been your father. From the day you were born, you've always been my kid. And to me, you're still my kid. And I'm telling you, you're not running off for no married man. You're going back to school, young lady. And you're going to get straight A's. What is there to think about, Gia? Run away. Go on. Don't go back to your mama. Why should you? After all, she lied, she cheated. She took money from three men and... And look what she did with the money. She went to Capri, bought fancy furs and, and jewels and a big yacht, while her poor daughter lived in a dirty little house and went to bad schools. So go ahead, Gia, and don't worry. Your mother will be punished for this terrible thing she's done. She's going to take care of it herself. Yes. Right now, she's on her way to the dedication to confess to the whole town. Oh, don't worry, she won't name names. None of you nice people will be hurt. Only your mother. And she deserves it. After all, she was so greedy. She wanted three things from life. The friendship of these men, the love of her daughter, the respect of her town. She lost the first two. Without them, what good is the third? So run, Gia, have a good trip. Your phone call, Signorina, to Paris. She's got her 
to be my kid. She drives like every woman in my family. Oh. Hey! Try to keep it in second, will you, buddy? Ladies and gentlemen, we've come at last to the moment we've all been waiting for, the dedication of the chapel. I've been looking for Miss Campbell, but... Uh, I don't believe she's arrived. Oh, there she is. Miss Campbell, would you come up, please? Just come right up here, please. Miss Campbell, I have great pleasure in presenting to you this plaque, which will appear on the Eddie Campbell Memorial Chapel, with our deepest love. Thank you, General, but I... I cannot accept this plaque. Wait! No, no, wait! You see, none of these people knew Eddie Campbell, but if they had, they'd have known he was very handsome. Warm and loving. He was a good family man. But most of all, he was modest. And if Eddie Campbell were here today, he would say, let the memorial be named for the people of San Forino. And for that, there's only one person to accept the plaque. If you would be kind enough, Contessa. Grazie, Mrs. Campbell. And thank you, General, for thinking of me. a dirty, rotten trick. Oh, well, what's so rotten? To find out after all these years that you've got a decent streak in you. Trouble is, I can't seem to find one in me. Oh! Well, it just seemed like the decent thing to do. You know, there's only one thing that still bothers me. Children, wait in the elevator, huh? Behave yourself. No pushing buttons. As a matter of fact, it kills me. It just destroys me. All my life, I wanted a daughter with me. Three. Three sons. With her, you have a girl. I couldn't help it. I didn't do anything different. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> What do you mean, oh boy? Oh boy, that's all. Them brothers are yours. What about them? This will have them rolling in the aisles. I can hear them now. One thing for sure, Wall, we know it ain't your kid. And you know something? They're right. Those doctor's reports are right. She ain't my kid. Not your kid. With that big mouth on her. The way she walks, the color of her eyes. Stubborn streak on her a mile wide. You tell me she's not your kid? Well, she's not Albert Schweitzer's kid, I'll tell you that. Hey, Fritzy, you really, you really think? Listen, don't you look at me so innocent with them big roly-poly eyes. 
I'm the one who's gonna have the explaining to do. When the kid comes to the States. She can stay with us? Where's she gonna stay, with strangers? The daughter's place is with her father. Come on, Fatso, we we'll missed the bus. Come on. Somebody's going somewhere? Bordeaux. Just where I came from. I'd been offered a job. What about this job? I don't work here anymore, remember? You don't work here anymore when I say you don't work here anymore. Oh, no, not this time. Not when you say it, when I say it, and I've said it, I'm through. Through being Mrs. Campbell's high hand, a worm under a foot, a man who lives in a closet. I'm going to find some dignity. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's better that you go. But to drive through these treacherous mountains at night, when you're so tired, it's been a long day. Have a good night's sleep in your own bed. Then in the morning, when you're fresh, that's when you should go and find your dignity. Lovers meet a small piazza or a shady street just to hear the way you say Buona Zera. There are two words that I've heard before, a lovely word that I still adore, but they mean just a little more from you. If you said it in a thousand ways, I'd be waiting for a thousand days for that little Italian phrase, Buona Zera. 